What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and Dana White in his postcard interview the other day was talking about Islam Makhachev when he was asked where Islam fits into the greatest lightweights of all time discussion and somehow he ended up turning that into a John Jones glaze session and also felt the need to downplay and discredit Islam Makhachev's achievements by saying that he beat Volkanovsky, who is a featherweight. I'm not going to detail all of the stuff now. I'm going to let the clips play. I've also got clips of him a few years ago trashing John Jones, saying that John Jones tarnishes his own legacy, saying how John Jones is a problem for the UFC and how he gets himself arrested and causes trouble, saying that he thought that John Jones lost to Dominic Reyes three rounds to two, and then also clips fast-forwarding three years to him saying John Jones has never lost and he's destroyed everyone at light heavyweight. So we're going to be talking about the hypocrisy of Dana White and also the disrespect shown to one of his champions in need to apparently just glaze John Jones. And I'm going to kind of discuss why he's doing this because it's very odd. Uh, but I'm going to play the first clip where the reporter asks him a question about Islam Makhachev. Let's get into it. Right here. Uh, Joe Rogan on the broadcast called Islam the perfect lightweight in there, just the size, his style of fighting, just his fight IQ. I'm curious, like, where do you rank him in this pantheon of lightweights that we've seen over the years? Yeah. So you can see there, that's a pretty normal question to ask. Obviously, Islam's just defended his belt for the third time. He's just tied the lightweight title defense record. It's a good discussion to have, talking about, you know, does he need one or two more wins, maybe three? I don't think he needs three, but, like, how many more wins does Islam need to maybe surpass Khabib as the lightweight goat or you know how good is Islam right now there's a really good chance for you to compliment Islam Makhachev and um, say how good that he is and how impressive he's been recently but no this is what Dana's going to say in a second yeah I, th I think he's you know one of the greatest of all time I don't think he's I, I think he's incredible I don't think he's the pound for pound best fighter in the world Okay, Dana. Okay, okay. That's not what he asked. He wasn't even asking about the pound for pound. He was talking about lightweights, I guess. But whatever. Interesting answer. Um, what what else are you going to say? You're going to. Why is he not the best pound for pound fighter in the world, Dana? I wonder who could possibly take that spot over Islam Makhachev, who is currently the got the most title defenses of anyone of any active champion right now in terms of defending their actual belt, because John Jones is no longer the light heavyweight champion. So who could possibly be the pound-for-pound pound number one? Uh, yeah, we all know who it's going to fucking, who Zayn is going to say, but I'll let him say it. Anybody to call Islam the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world when John Jones is still fucking fighting is nuts and shouldn't be ranking in the pound-for-pound pound or doing any of the fucking rankings ever. Okay, so not only is Dana saying Islam is not the pound-for-pound pound and John Jones is the pound-for-pound pound in his opinion, he's like angrily saying that you shouldn't even, there's not even a consideration for Islam Makhachev to be pound for pound number one, despite the fact that he's won eight times in the time space that John Jones has won once. Uh, but whatever, that's fine. Um, I don't know, maybe my criteria, maybe you guys let me know in the comments if I'm tripping, maybe my criteria of winning fights actively and being a current champion defending your belt means something, not title defenses 10 years ago. Maybe just me. Let me know in the comments, yes or no. Is that crazy? Or is this like a crazy hot take for me that to be pound for pound number one, you probably should have fought more than once this decade? Maybe a crazy take for me. Um, but let's keep going. Well, what, what else has Dana got to say? I really think. John Jones has never lost a fight ever. He's fought all the baddest dudes in the world. And then when you think about what pound for pound rankings really mean, he moved it up to heavyweight and destroyed the best guy in the world. Um, just just blatantly incorrect statement. He moved up and fought Cyril Gunn, who was coming off one win over Tai Tuivasa, who got dropped in that fight by Tai Tuivasa, who then went on to be on a fucking four-fight losing streak. Um, but yeah, no, he destroyed the best guy in the division. Obviously, John Jones, who literally was trying to over-negotiate himself, which you talked about, and you hated John Jones for doing that, and you publicly slandered him for asking for too much money, which I'm fine with. I'm okay with you shit talking to Jones and saying, you don't get to fucking ask for $30 million. That's fine. You can say that. But now what's with the glazing? And now you're acting like he didn't sit out for three years, avoid an Ngannou fight, which you him, you yourself said after Ngannou beat Stipe, you're like, I don't, I don't have the clip um, when I was looking for all these like bits of information. I didn't look for that one, but I remembered this now. And you guys, if you watched the sport back then too, you'll know. There was the clip of Dana White saying, um, you know, I don't know if John Jones wants that smoke after the Stipe fight with Ngannou. It's like, that's a really tough matchup for Jones. I don't think he's going to take that. So he was saying that. So 
best guy in the world. Uh, on I think Garn might have beaten Ngannou, but on paper, Ngannou was the champion. John Jones chose to not fight him for three years. He was not injured. He was not doing anything. He did not need that long to bulk himself up to heavyweight. We've seen many other people do it way quicker than that. You did not need three years to put on like five kilos of muscle. Didn't need to happen. Um, but yeah, he, he destroyed the best guy at heavyweight, of course, Cyril Garn, the best guy at heavyweight. We all know now that Tom Aspinall is the best guy at heavyweight. Arguably, Curtis Blades is better than Cyril Garn. Arguably, Sergei Pavlovich is better than Cyril Garn. These are not... I'm not saying 100%. I'm saying 100% Aspinall is. That's just true. Um, and then I think Blades and Pavlovich both have a better argument. But to act like he went up there and beat the champion at heavyweight, he won a vacant title fight. I'm going to talk about this more in a second. Um, but yeah, this is just incorrect. This is just glazing from Dana. So what else does he have to say? As long as John Jones is still fighting active and in the rankings, yeah, nobody's bound for pound best fighter in the world. Well, to kind of go off. Would we call John Jones active? Because this number I'm seeing here, because he's, he's been out for a whole lot of time, uh, and we're going to see a clip in a second where he says that Jones is saying he's fighting Stipe at MSG November 9th, and uh, my calculations, that's over 600 days since he last fought, so... Uh, Active is a strong word to use for John Jones. Um, maybe, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe, maybe, maybe 600 days is fine. Maybe like 645, 647 days, whatever it is. Um, maybe that's fine. Maybe, maybe it's like 650 is where we cut it off and say, all right, you're getting a little bit inactive there, John. Uh, but no, John's obviously active fighter fought once in the fucking decade. Um, but that's fine. Let's move on though to another clip. Yeah, nobody's pound for pound best fighter in the world. Well, to kind of go off that, Islam said he wanted that second belt. He wanted to go to welterweight. Is that something that I know you have that welterweight title fight coming up? Is that something maybe you'll you'll discuss with him, or do you want him to stick at lightweight? Very good question. Because in a minute we're going to hear Dana White discredit Islam and say that his wins are not pound for pound quality because he beat the champion below him in Volkanovski. Also, kind of discrediting Volk as if to say that beating uh, Volkanovski is not as impressive as John Jones beating. Um, Anthony Smith and Tiago Santos by dodgy decision and Dominic Reyes by robbery. Yeah, no, but because those were his, th that was his weight class, um, and not fighting a featherweight, even though half of Jones' defenses were against middleweights. But no, 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 Islam's two wins over Volkanovski. Nah, not impressive. Featherweight, boring, sucks, boo. Uh, yeah, whatever. Dana White just coping, being delusional here. Uh, what else does he have to say? Also, yeah, Islam moving up to welterweight. Um, I don't think he should right now. Again, I'm not saying that Islam should move up right now, but Dana White, by the way he's talking, should be like, oh, I'm all for this. If you want to prove you're the pound for pound number one, go up and fight, Leon. We'll book that fight next after Bilal. Sure, 100%. I want to see if Islam can overtake John Jones or something like that. But no, he kind of just doesn't sound all that enthusiastic about it. Uh, which is interesting. Even though I'm not for Islam moving up right now, I think he needs to defend at least one more time. But still, interesting thing for Dana to probably not even really acknowledge it that much. I mean, he hasn't said anything like that to us, so we'll see. Uh, what did you make of the... Let me get this straight. Islam's called for welterweight multiple times after multiple wins, talked about it publicly. But no, he's never, he's never asked the UFC about it. I mean, maybe he hasn't, but still, I don't know, maybe at least say like he's never talked about it to us, but that'd be cool. That's something down the line that we'd love to see. We'd love to see guys challenge themselves and move up because they got behind Volk when he wanted to fight Islam. They promoted that as pound for pound number one versus pound for pound number two, um, and they did that twice. So very interesting, um, very interesting for John Jones to 100% be pound for pound number one and then for Dana to not be like, no, Islam moving up and trying to win a belt at a second division, even though apparently, according to Dana, that's the only way that you can be pound for pound number one. Um, no, that that's we, we're not too fond of that idea with Islam. Uh, but let's move on to another clip where he also talks more about Islam and his win streak and sort of how Islam fits into the picture. Or I'll let Dana say it, or I'll let the reporter ask the question. Yeah, just to go back to Islam, uh, he's now on a 14-fight winning streak, which is the third longest in history behind Anderson Silva and Usman. What would it take for him to surpass John Jones in your mind for that pound for pound number one? There we go. I, f I actually did kind of forget what the question was, but that was the question. He's asking, what would Islam have to do to surpass uh, John Jones for that pound for pound number one spot, which somehow in your mind, Dana, Islam doesn't already have, despite pretty much everyone unanimously agreeing that Islam's pound for pound number one. I arguably think after 500 days, I think that that's my cutoff, in my opinion, 500 days. I'm going to keep him on the list just for the sake of it. Um, but my cutoff is like 500 days. 
I think a year is a cutoff. But for some guys, you know, you get an injury a year if you don't get stripped. Very interesting to see. And we're going to move to a clip in a second where he does talk about you have a year to defend your title. That is a quote from Dana White, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's the, that was the question. So let's hear what Dana's got to say about that. I mean, when you think about what pound for pound really means, right? He fought Volkanovski, mm -hmm. who's a weight class lower than him. John Jones beat everybody at light heavyweight, then beat the best heavyweight in the division. Yeah, and Garn is not the best heavyweight in the division. I don't think he's even the second or third best heavyweight in the division, but whatever. And also, again, discrediting Islam's win by saying he beat Volkanovski, who's the weight class below him. Yeah, Volkanovski was also the featherweight champion who had four title defenses at the time, went on to get a fifth. So a five-time defending champion, featherweight champion in a very difficult division to defend your belt a lot. Jose Aldo is the only one to do it more than Volk. Um... And also, who has John Jones? Let, let's tally up all of John Jones' wins and how many title defenses they have, or let's just look at his opponents. Who of John Jones' opponents would you say is better and a more skilled and difficult win than Volkanovski? My genuine question. Um, and also, who would you say, I know we didn't talk about this, but who would you say is a better, more difficult win for John Jones than Charles Oliveira or even Dustin Poirier? Because in my opinion, in comparison, Dustin is more the caliber of, I would say Dustin's more the caliber of Jones's, some of the wins, but even some of, some of John Jones's wins would be like if Islam defended against like Benil Dayush, like now, like that's, oh, maybe that comparison's a little bit off, but I think you guys get where I'm coming from. He was not fighting the best guys in the world. Obviously he did defend a bunch, um, but it's just weird for me to, it's just weird to hear Dana Y be like, no. Jo okay, Jones moving up a division to heavyweight, which is less skilled. Heavyweight is not as talented of a division. We see fighters go up to heavyweight all the time and do way better just because heavyweights are fucking fat and they're shit. Um, that's like, they're, they're awful. Most heavyweights are terrible. Um, compared to featherweight, which is an extremely difficult division, um, one of the most skilled divisions in the sport. So yeah, just because a bigger weight class means better, apparently. Fucking bigger means better, according to Dana. I'm sure he likes bigger cocks in his mouth as well. Um, John Jones's especially. Um, but let's fucking move on to another clip. This is pissing me off what Dana has to say. Fucking don't disrespect our Volk, man. The little Volk, don't disrespect him. He won't. He won't. He'll stand up for himself. Um, but yeah, let's move on to another clip. There's nothing at a higher weight class. So I mean John Jones is absolutely, positively the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Probably the greatest fighter of all time in any sport. No, Dana, how the fuck did we get here, you bald fuck? How did we get from how does Islam fit into the lightweight discussion to John Jones is the greatest fighter of all time, possibly the greatest fighter if, in all of combat sports ever? Um, you know, just like, look, 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 that's what Dana's doing. Like, how did we get from Islam Makachev to just literally slurping on John Jones? Like, pause. Full Diddy, full Jones, like that's what Dana's doing. But how do we get here? Anyway, let's move on. About when you talk about who's the baddest dude in the world, you put two guys in a room and who walks out. John Jones walks out of the fucking room every time. No question about it. Yeah, mate. By the sounds of it, it sounds like you want to be the fucking second guy in the room and you want him to fuck the shit out of you before he walks out. Like Jesus Christ, Dana, what are you doing? Like, do you want to be the guy in the room with John Jones? Like, is that what you want? Do you want him? to dominate you, and then walk out of the room and then be like, see you guys, he's the GOAT. <laughs> is this what Dana wants? Is this some Rogan-level fucking glazing too? Like, this, Dana has learned the art of the glaze from Joe Rogan. Ever since that reporter confused Dana White with Joe Rogan, they've become the same person. Like, Dana White has just been able to, like, has just had uncontrollable urges to just glaze melanated fighters. Like, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> but same with Usman. But whatever, let's move. Like, can't give GSP a single fucking ounce of credit. Refuses to say Islam's pound for pound. Refuses to credit a win over Volk. But no, yeah, Usman and uh, Usman's the welterweight goat, guys. And then John Jones is pound for pound number one. By the way, um, you'd think this was jo you'd think this was Joe Rogan talking. Uh, but let's move on. And in no way trying to diminish John's accomplishments, but like, you know, he's fought. <laughs> but he's fought once in the last however many years. Islam's fighting multiple times a year, defending. So like, at what point does activity outweigh? Well, you know, let Based reporter. This guy's a G. I'm pretty sure this is the guy that asked for, like, if Dana would up the bonuses for 302. Fucking W reporter. More reporters need to be like this guy. 
put a chuck a W reporter in the comments if this guy's a fucking Chad. Um, challenging Dana, not being like those guys that'll like say something and then as soon as he's like, you fucking moron, and then they'll be, they'll just quiet down. Like this guy's actually standing up to Dana. Stand up for yourself. Um, but yeah, let's see what Dana has to say about that, given that John Jones has literally not fucking fought in decades. John's beautiful. I, I like that you asked that question. Let's talk about activity. Three years off. Nobody, not even Ali. Nobody's ever come from three years off and looked the same. John Jones walked through the heavyweight, the number one guy in the heavyweight division, like it was nothing, with three years off. Yeah, John Jones is the best ever. Ever. And when I say ever, I mean in any combat sport. He's the best ever. You throw John Jones in a room with anybody, John Jones walks out of the room. Bro, this is some Lucas Tracy, Roman Coppola level glazing right now. What the fuck am I listening to? Ever. He's the best ever. There is no doubt about it. If he walks into a room with another man, he's walking out alive. Like, that other man, he's fucked. Literally. Uh, like, what is this glaze from Dana White? Like, the best ever. He beat the number one heavyweight. The number one heavyweight who was only the number one heavyweight because Nganu left. Um, and John Jones didn't want to fight Nganu. We all know that. Um, cause you know, he was waiting and then he's like, oh, who, who's, and Garn is not too good of a matchup for me. Oh, Cyril Garn, striker with no power and terrible wrestling. Oh, I'll take him. And then it's like, oh, Stipe, sweet. Oh, but Aspinall, oh, no chance. Dangerous power puncher with grappling. Oh, fuck off. I don't want any part of that. Uh, so yeah, very interesting from Dana. Ever. Best ever. Um, but again, pound for pound is not a GOAT discussion. If this was the GOAT list, then Volk would still be above Islam. And I still stand by that. And then it would be, if it, if the fucking pound for pound list was the bet, like the goat list right now, then yeah, it would be John Jones. It would be fucking Volkanovsky. It'd be Kamara Usman. It'd be Islam Makachev. It'd be these guys like Pereira, Izzy, these guys. But it's not the fucking goat list. Pound for pound is like right now, the pound for pound best fighter, the guy that is displaying the most skill, the most well-rounded fighter in the sport right now, Islam Makachev, subbed Dustin Poirier, subbed Charles Oliveira the best jiu-jitsu fighter who was like heralded as the best jiu-jitsu fighter in the sport and definitely in the lightweight division. Knocked out Volk in the rematch. Yes, it was on short notice, but even in the first fight, was winning a lot of that fight on the feet, winning that fight on the ground. Poirier having success on the feet. Poirier was landing good shots, but Islam was having equal amounts of success on the feet with Poirier and on the ground. That's pound for pound. That pound for pound is skill. Pound for pound is defending your belt actively. Pound for pound is demonstrating that you are currently the best skillful fighter in the sport. And if you went up or if you fought other styles of fights, then you would win. Um, but no, John Jones, yeah, he beats Cyril Gunn, guys. He's a pound for pound number one. Um, yeah, whatever. Fucking hell. John's uh, saying he's fighting Stipe November 9th in New York. Um, is that fine? I love it. Or, <laughs> yeah, nothing's official yet, though, obviously. Yeah, I'm in. Great. And, um, yeah, I love it too, Dana. I love that 615-day layoff. <laughs> Fucking hell. And I'm going to show you a clip in literally like one minute. Or actually, maybe two minutes. I'm going to just quickly talk about um, the inactivity of John Jones and also the legacy and the resume of Islam right now. Just a reminder, Islam Makhachev with that win over Poirier, 26-1. John Jones also. Or no, not also. 27-1. Islam is expected to fight in October against Arman Sukin. That will be before John Jones. Islam Makhachev will, by the time John Jones fights again, Islam will have the same MMA record as him. I know you can say, yeah, Islam fought more cans and shit on the regional scene in Russia and fight some bums, but like still, 20, Islam will have a 27-1 and record if he wins his next fight. That is the same as John Jones. So very interesting stuff. Um, but also, let's, let's look at the resume of Islam um, compared to the resume of John Jones in the recent time frame. Because we all agree that all time, yes, John Jones, better than Islam, no doubt about it. He's beat champions, he's defended his belt like 10 times, all that, all that good stuff. But guess what? It was literally last decade. Um, so let's look at the now. Let's look at the actual like current decade that we are in because me personally, that's kind of important, not last decade. When I'm looking at pound for pound right now, I'm kind of looking at this decade. So let's take a look at this decade and uh, see what both of them have done and, and compare their vastly similar um, or vastly not similar fucking records. So right off the bat there, you can see Islam did take a two-year layoff, but since then he fought Drew Dober, March 6th, 2021. And you can see there, 1,185 days in between then and now. And that averages out with those eight fights to 148 uh, days 
or one fight every 148 days. Now, John Jones' number, I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, I'm sure you can guess it's probably a little bit wider than that. But Islam's record, let's just take a look at it real quick. So since that day, he's fought Drew Dober. So these eight fights, Drew Dober, Tiago Moises, uh, both those finishes, Dan Hooker, submission, Bobby Green, TKO, Charles Oliveira, submission, Alexander Volkanovsky, decision in the fight of the year, and then Volkanovsky getting the rematch with a KO in the first, and then Dustin Poirier, round five submission. So out of those last eight fights, seven of them finishes, uh, one decision in which was the fight of the year. So yeah, that seems pretty good to me. That seems like a kind of pretty pound-for-pound pound number one sort of resume in terms of this decade. Um, but let's take a look at what John Jones, obviously the GOAT, and the clear pound-for-pound pound number one has done. So I'm not even going to show the fucking fights, but obviously since February 10th, 2020, he beat Dominic Reyes, beat, he didn't beat him, and then he beat Cyril Garn. So that's two wins. That averages out to uh, about one win every about 780 days, something like that, uh, so yeah, not too crazy for John Jones, that's over two, one win every two years on average, uh, and that's brought heavily up by the fact that he fought Garn um, last year, so yeah, real active stuff, real pound for pound number one behavior from John Jones, um, but I can't be fucked talking about this anymore, I know none of you disagree with me, we all know that Islam's number one, John Jones, not even number two, in my opinion, not even number three or number four, um, probably shouldn't even be on the list, um, until he fights Aspinall, but let's see what, this is, let's take a flashback, I love, I love bringing up the past, you know, like I'm, like I'm an ex-girlfriend, I love bringing up the past, um, so let's take a look at what Dana said in the past about John Jones, let's, let's bring out the receipts, as Ariel Helwani likes to call them. It's harder when, the one thing thing that we do do is you, you you have a year to defend your title which is a very long time right and if you don't we move on but most of these guys listen if you don't want to fight you don't have to fight wow very interesting you have a year to defend your title a whole year that's a very long time but john jones has not been able to complete that task for uh over a year and a half um or, or something along or maybe no about year and a year and a quarter 15 months ish uh very large amount of time over 500 days in fact crazy stuff um <laughs> it's just funny how dana white is like clearly so hypocritical what changed like what he's got dirt on him or something like he's got a video of like dana white doing something with like a female fighter or something like that he's got some sort of video he's got something in the closet and i'm not talking about john jones sexuality um he's got someone on dana because why is Dana switched up from this so much? Like, did did Jones really sub and go, did Jones sub and gun in two minutes really change his opinion on him that much? Where I'm about to show you a clip too. Um, like, he did not like John Jones. He literally says he's got a weird relationship with John Jones. He's not a massive fan of him. He gets himself in trouble. All of this, um, and then it's now it's just constant glazing. So let's see what else Dana had to say because this is a very interesting clip. John Jones and I have always had this, you know. I'm I'm always looking at what what John Jones could have been, you know. Could have been he could have been the LeBron of the sport. He could have been literally that big. Um, you know, the stuff that he's been through to show up and think he you know basically demand fifteen million dollars or twenty million dollars or thirty million dollars. It's crazy. So, he can do whatever he wants to do. He can sit out. He can. He can fight, he can whatever, you know? You know how this works. You guys know how I am. John Jones can say whatever he wants publicly. It's his, it's his God-given right here in America. He can say whatever he wants. Um, um, and when he's ready to come back and fight, he can. I saw a lot of people saying, like, why can't he make Deontay Wilder money? I mean, like, he, I mean, you said he's the greatest of all time, right? So being the greatest of all time doesn't mean you get $30 million. Being able to sell. John Jones has done a lot of things to himself. He's saying, in one of his tweets, he was saying that I tarnished his, I tarnished you? You've done a very good job of tarnishing you. No, I haven't done that. And well said, Dana. Laying it down on the fighters, letting him know you don't demand shit. You don't deserve fucking $20 million. You ain't that big of a draw. It matters how much you sell. You know, being the goat of the sport doesn't mean fuck all. Uh, so W statement from Dana White. I'm a big fan of this energy. But where'd it go? Where's he gone now? Yeah, she just became, became fat and rolled off into the songs. Fuck all he's done in the sport. That was a terrible impression. I went off the wrong pitch there. Um, normally, my Conor impression is not too bad. But 
John Jones is da- glazing. Um, sorry, Dana's glazing John Jones almost as much as he was glazing Connor back in the day, and we know how much Dana was doing tricks on it with Connor. Um, but yeah, let's look. This is another another clip from a scrum little scrum which I'm about to talk about to show you where he's talking about John Jones getting arrested. But again, um, what's it called? You you said I tarnished you. You've done a very good job of tarnishing you. So yeah, well said, Dana White. Um, but let's move on to another clip. Oh. Jones yesterday was being inducted in the Hall of Fame and then hours later going to jail. Um, what what is the situation right now? Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, we'll see how this plays out legally for him and where this ends up going. Um, it's hard to bring this guy to Las Vegas for any reason. The city is not not good for John Jones. Um, and here we are again. What was your reaction when you first got the news that there had been another incident? It's like, it's like it's not even shocking anymore. It's 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 uh, when we bring him here, it's almost expected. You know, you can't even can't even get him in Las Vegas for less than twelve hours to induct him into the Hall of Fame. It's it's uh, it's a problem. You know. This guy's got a lot of demons. No, it's almost expected. It's a problem. This guy's a problem. We can't even bring him into Vegas for 12 hours. These sound like the words of someone who's not a big fan of John Jones and who sounds like John Jones is a bit of a liability to the company. Um, and if, if my memory serves me correctly, which it probably does because I'm a genius, uh, I seem to remember you guys having to move an entire event to a different fucking commission to a different location within the country because John Jones tested positive and he's done that multiple times too he's been he's got fights cancelled he's got results of fights overturned he got the first ever UFC card completely cancelled because he refused to fight on short notice crazy stuff John Jones making waves you know he truly is that's goat activities there you know they always say the goat is the one who makes the biggest impact in the sport who makes the biggest waves who does things that no one else has done well John Jones has done things that no one else has done there's no doubt about that you know he has failed more PED tests than anyone else he has caused more issues, more logistical issues for the company than anyone else. He was the first man, not only to win the belt at 23, but also to actually get an entire event cancelled because he didn't want to take a short notice fight. You know who Islam fought on short notice? Volkanovsky on 10 days notice, the guy who gave him the toughest fight of his career. He fought him on 10 days notice and knocked him out in the first. It sucked, but it happened. And that's what real fucking champions do. You even said it when Islam took the fight with Volk. He said... Islam's like, I'm the champion, it's my job to defend against anyone. And you said, I'm going to put that up on the walls of the Apex. I love that quote, I love that energy. Jones didn't have that energy, motherfucker. Jones turned down that fight. Jones said, no, I'm not trying to fight this motherfucker on short notice. I I need my planning time so I can can figure out my little fucking science-y shit and I can figure out the range at which I need to eye poke this guy. Um, So yeah, real interesting stuff from Dana White. Sounds like John Jones is a bit of a logistical nightmare for you guys. So I'm not sure, and also... Been out for over a year, and now you're still glazing him. What's what, What's going on? Uh, let's move on, though, to another clip. Going into the last round, I had uh, Dominic Reyes 3-1 to one going into the last round. Uh, my kids are terrorizing me that the fix is in, and how can this happen, Dad? Reyes won that fight. And the- I'm just going to... Um, I'm going to play this clip really quickly, but just, just before... I, obviously, that I had Reyes winning 3-1, to one. Sounds like, because you can't take away that scorecard, so it sounds like you had Reyes winning 3-2. to two. So this clip I'm about to show you of you saying John Jones has destroyed everyone, really interesting given that you just said that he lost to Reyes, in your opinion. Uh, so that's, that's interesting. But let's play this clip now. Who is in the conversation for the greatest of all time? John Jones. So you've, you've talked about John Jones, but what are the metrics involved here? He's never been beat. He destroyed everybody at light heavyweight, which at the time was the toughest uh, weight class um, in the company, in the sport. And then I uh, moved up to heavyweight, won easily at heavyweight. Um, and 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 when you look at a guy and you look at what he was doing outside the octagon at the same time, which shouldn't be part of it, shouldn't be part of the the equation, but when you do, wow. John Jones, there's no debate. He never lost. He, he destroyed everyone at light heavyweight. He's never been beaten. He went up to heavyweight and destroyed the number one guy easily. Um, this is just unbelievable glaze from Dana White. Again, I, I, I don't know about me. Maybe I'm tripping, but I heard Dana White say I had Reyes up 3-2 going into the fifth. And uh, 
even if John Jones won the fifth, which he, he did, uh, that sounds like a three-two scorecard to race for me. I don't know about that, but uh, I can do basic maths, and uh, it sounds like it sounds like John Jones lost that fight, buddy. Uh, so for you to say, yeah, he destroyed everyone at light heavyweight, the toughest division in the sport, it's just objectively wrong as well. Like back in the day when he was getting the early title defenses, maybe, but. Uh, like around that mid kind of like when he was getting that five, six, seventh title defense, which is still very impressive. Um, light heavyweight was clearly not the toughest weight class in the sport. There's not much debate about that, to be honest. Lightweight was harder. Bantamweight was arguably harder. Like these divisions, welterweight was probably tougher as well. Um, so yeah, that's also just wrong, but also destroyed everyone. Let's, let's take a look at this real quick. This is before, this is a streak of fights before the Cyril Garn fight. And I'm seeing... Uh, unanimous decision against Reyes, you lost that fight. Split against Santos, arguably lost. Took Smith to a decision. Obviously, the Gustafson TKO, very impressive. Overturned a KO win over Cormier due to testing positive. Uh, you know, decision against OSP, decision against DC, decision against Glover, decision against Gustafson. He destroyed everyone. Not saying decisions can't be destroying. I know he won a lot of those fights convincingly, but don't be acting like this motherfucker was just Tom Aspinalling people inside two minutes and just TKOing them immediately. Like, don't be acting like that. It's just wrong. Um, and yeah, again, the clips of him saying like John Jones tarnished himself, all this, all this, um, he's like, he's causing a lot of problems. Um, I had Reyes winning three, two, and then you're saying he's never been beat. He's never lost all this shit, tested positive, caused issues for your company. Um, also hasn't fucking won a fight. He's won one fight in the last like over 500 days. By the time he fights Stipe in November, going to be over 600 days. Um, in that time frame, Islam's beaten eight fighters, averaging um, one win every five months. John Jones, averaging one win every two years. Um, Islam Makhachev, uh, in terms of title wins, Oliveira, dethroned, one of the best grapplers in the sport, champion, multiple-time defending champion. Uh, Volkanovski coming up, four-time defending champion, who then went on to defend his belt once more after that. Beat him, KO'd him again in the rematch, coming off his most recent title defense, and then Dustin Poirier, who, while not deserving for the title shot, did um, uh, was coming off a TKO KO win over an up and comer. Is still one of the top five guys, still a dangerous challenge, and he arguably beat him everywhere. Um, so if, yeah, it's just odd. I think we can all agree. I'm preaching to the choir here in terms of saying that yeah, obviously we know Islam's bound for number one. Just the glazing of Jones from Dana is weird. The fact that he clearly did not used to like him. We know when the antitrust lawsuit was happening, I don't have the um the screenshot, but there was literally a photo of him. <coughs> fuck, sorry, I just coughed. Um, it was actually a screenshot, uh, a message of him saying like, fuck, John Jones is a dirtbag. We don't need him or whatever um, along those lines. So it's weird how much, how different Dana White's perception and attitude towards Jones is. Uh, he's clearly not, um, the pound for pound number one right now. Yes, you can say he's the goat, but it's just, it's just the glazing is odd, but yeah, that'll do it guys. Over a half an hour rant for you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, leave your thoughts in the comments. Go follow me on Instagram, left lane MMA, like the video, subscribe to the channel and yeah, peace out guys.